Sanders, do you really think I'd hide presents under the couch? <laughs> P.S. Chandler, I knew they'd break you. <laughs> In English, if you break someone, then that means you destroy their morale, resistance, or spirit. So in this friend's clip, Rachel and Phoebe are trying to find some Christmas presents and they end up breaking Chandler and destroying his resistance. In this video, you'll see how they do this and you'll also learn some common English expressions so that you can understand native speakers and speak like them too. Let's start by watching the clip with subtitles. Okay, Steve, you look in the kitchen, I will look in the back closet. Okay. I can save you time, ladies. I'm right here. <laughs> yeah. Chandler, why don't you take a walk? This doesn't concern you. <laughs> we are looking for our Christmas presents for Monica. What? That's terrible. No, no, we do it every year. Oh, well, that, that makes it not terrible. <laughs> no, yeah, we never find them. She's always best at us, that wily minx. <laughs> yeah, don't worry, we're just gonna search here for an hour, and then we're gonna go over to Joey's and search, okay? No, not okay. You can't look for Monica's presents. Oh, no, we have to. No, you don't have to, and you can't, because I, I live here, too. <laughs> well, then you should look with us. Why? Now to break down key vocabulary and expressions. Okay, Steve, you look in the kitchen, I will look in the back closet. One of the meanings of look in is to search. Here we're using a preposition in because Rachel is looking in an enclosed space or inside something. For example, Hey, where's my umbrella? Look in the car. Where's my phone? Look under the sofa. Where's my watch? Ugh, look at your arm. Notice that if we change the preposition to at, as in look at, the meaning completely changes. It means to see something. Prepositions can completely change the meaning of a verb, so be careful. Okay, Steve, you look in the kitchen, I will look in the back closet. A closet is a tiny room where people store clothes and other objects in a house. It's common for American houses to have a front closet located towards the entrance of a house. And a back closet is located towards the back of a house. It's a miracle Monica's place even has a closet since New York City is known for having very tiny apartments. What are you doing? Monica has a secret closet and she won't let me see what's in it. Okay. I can save you time, ladies. I'm right here. <laughs> here, Chandler jokes about Rachel and Phoebe's intentions. He sarcastically says that they're looking for him when in fact it's obvious that they're not. Okay, that did not just happen. <laughs> yeah. Chandler, why don't you take a walk? This doesn't concern you. <laughs> Why don't is an extremely common structure used for making suggestions. It's very similar to using let's. So instead of saying, let's get some ice cream, you can say, why don't we get some ice cream? Let's see some more practical examples of this expression on Fluent You, a handy app for learning English through real world content. Why don't you just tell me if you're busy or not? That's ridiculous. You know what? Uh, why don't you move that coat rack? Oh, why don't you make her one of your little jokes? Yeah. Chandler, why don't you take a walk? This doesn't concern you. <laughs> take a walk is an indirect method of telling someone to leave. Bye-bye. It's an expression used to indicate dismissal. You don't want them there. Take a look at this example. Shouldn't you be studying? I don't need your advice, so take a walk. Okay. Now back to our clip, Phoebe tells Chandler to leave or to take a walk because what they're doing does not concern him. If something concerns someone, then that means it involves them or it's relevant to them in some way. Rachel and Vivi don't want Chandler to get in their way of finding the Christmas presents. They don't want him involved. 
Take a look at this other example. Taylor, there is nothing in there that concerns you. If you love me, you'll just you'll let it go. Yeah, Chandler, why don't you take a walk? This doesn't concern you. <laughs> we are looking for our Christmas presents for Monica. What? That's terrible. No, no, we do it every year. Oh, well, that, that makes it not terrible. <laughs> presents is a synonym for gift. These are things we give family and friends. Usually for a special occasion or holidays like birthdays and Christmas. Let's use Fluent Use Handy Video Dictionary to check out more examples. Presents are the best way to show someone how much you care. Um, should we just keep opening up the presents? We are looking for our Christmas presents for Monica. What? That's terrible. No, no, we do it every year. Terrible is an extreme adjective that means very bad or horrible. Some other extreme adjectives include terrified, very afraid, ancient, very old, and furious, very angry. Extreme adjectives are great for expanding vocabulary, especially because English learners tend to overuse the adverb very. We are looking for our Christmas presents for Monica. What? That's terrible. No, no, we do it every year. Oh, well, that, that makes it not terrible. <laughs> no, yeah, we never find them. She's always best at us, that wily minx. <laughs> Best is more commonly known as the superlative adjective of the irregular adjective good. But depending on the context, like this friend's clip, best can also be a verb. It means to defeat someone, usually using intelligence rather than force, although it can also be used for force as well. I know what it's like to be best at the Jack Sparrow. Similar to Jack Sparrow, Monica cleverly hides the Christmas presents so that Rachel and Phoebe can't find them. No, yeah, we never find them. She's always best at us, that Wiley minx. <laughs> Wiley is just a synonym for smart, intelligent, or clever. Minx is usually a young woman that is bold and cunning. It can also be used for a woman that is flirtatious. Genevieve, hello. You're looking sexy as a minx. I was going to say festive due to the scarf. So a wily minx would be used for someone that is extremely crafty, sly, and clever. Yeah, don't worry. We're just going to search here for an hour, and then we're going to go over to Joey's and search, OK? Go over to simply means to go to someone's house usually to visit them, not to look around their things. The opposite, so when someone visits your house, is come over. I love having guests come over for dinner, much like Monica. Chandler, aren't you worried about what to get Monica for Christmas? No, I have a great idea for a present for her. Oh, that's it? A great idea, I okay. guess. <laughs> Chandler, that's not enough. I mean, what if she gets you a great present, two medium presents, and then a bunch of little presents, and you've just gotten her one great present? I mean, that's just gonna make her feel bad. Why would you do that to her, Chandler? Why? Why? If I helped, we could find it faster. That's right. Oh, oh, we have a live one. Oh, it's a Macy's bag. Yeah. Oh, oh, who's it for? Dear losers, do you really think I'd hide presents under the couch? P.S. <laughs> Chandler, I knew they'd break you. Uh-oh, she may be on to us. <laughs> Chandler, aren't you worried about what to get Monica for Christmas? If you're worried, then that means you're anxious, usually because of a specific problem. When mentioning what the problem is, then we need to use the preposition about. Here's another example. I'm so worried about him. Somebody lose a ring? Hey! Oh! Subscribe so you don't worry about missing our next video lesson.
presents? No, I have a great idea for a present for her. Oh, that's it? A great idea, I guess? <laughs> Great idea is an expression you can use when you're talking about a good plan or a suggestion. A good suggestion. So Chandler hasn't gotten Monica's Christmas present yet, but he has a good idea or a good plan as to what to give her. No, I have a great idea for a present for her. Oh, that's it? A great idea, I guess? <laughs> That's it is a common expression used for when you desired or expected a greater outcome. <laughs> yes, uh, interesting idea. Um, talk about it, but no. <laughs> so that's it. Phoebe expected a much better present than simply an idea. Oh, that's it? A great idea, I guess. <laughs> Notice Phoebe's intention here. She is clearly using sarcasm to express that whatever Chandler has planned is clearly not going to be enough to make Monica happy. She also plays around with the fact that Chandler's gift to Monica is just an idea. Like literally it's an idea, not an actual gift he bought. Chandler, that's not enough. I mean, what if she gets you a great present, two medium presents, and then a bunch of little presents? If we watch the same video on Fluent You, when we click on what if in the interactive subtitles, we can see that it's an expression that asks what the result would be if something were to happen. Let's get a better understanding of what if with Fluent You's video examples. Oh God, what if it wasn't breezy? <laughs> Uh, what if you saw a three-legged puppy? Watching real content videos like on Netflix and YouTube is a great tool to improving your English skills. But if you just passively watch something, you're not really learning. This is why Fluent You is a game changer when it comes to language learning. Besides learning with real-world content and having accurate subtitles with context-specific definitions at the touch of a finger, there are also personalized quizzes and speaking questions after each video. If you're serious about learning and speaking English, click on the link in the description box below and get your free 14-day trial. Chandler, that's not enough. I mean, what if she gets you a great present, two medium presents, and then a bunch of little presents? A bunch is an informal way of saying a lot. So it expresses a large quantity. Like a lot, we also need to use it with the preposition of when specifying what you're talking about. Ooh, look, ugly naked guy lit a bunch of candles. <laughs> I mean, what if she gets you a great present, two medium presents, and then a bunch of little presents, and you've just gotten her one great present? I mean, that's just gonna make her feel bad. Why would you do that to her, Chandler? Why? Why? <laughs> to make someone feel means to cause someone to feel something. For instance, chocolate makes me feel happy. Ah, chocolate. Wrong subtitles make me feel angry. So Rachel expresses here that if Chandler just gets Monica one present, that will cause her to feel sad. I mean, that's just gonna make her feel bad. Why would you do that to her, Chandler? Why, why? <laughs> if I helped, we could find him faster. That's right. <laughs> that's right, expresses agreement. So Rachel agrees that if Chandler helps them look for presents, they will find them faster. If I helped, we could find him faster. That's right. <laughs> oh, oh, we have a live one. Oh, oh, it's a Macy's bag. Yeah. This funny expression comes from fishing. If a fisherman has hooked a fish that's putting up a battle, then they'll refer to it as a live one. Phoebe ironically uses this expression because she did not expect to find one of Monica's Christmas presents she expresses the surprise by referring to the present as a live one. Oh, oh, we have a live one! Oh, oh, it's a Macy's bag! Yeah! Oh, oh, who's it for? Macy's is one of the biggest department stores in the U.S. 
Department stores are huge and they sell a wide variety of things from clothes to furniture to appliances and so much more. Oh, oh, we have a live one! Oh, oh, it's a Macy's bag! Yeah! Oh, oh, who's it for? O is an extremely common interjection and its meaning will vary greatly depending on the intonation. In this clip, both Rachel and Phoebe say oh, but their intonations and therefore their intentions are completely different. Rachel's O oh communicates disappointment, therefore its tone is low and short. Oh. While Phoebe's is a long O oh and the tone is higher, communicating excitement and surprise. Do you really think I'd hide presents under the couch? Dear is generally used as a greeting in letters, emails, and notes. We use it right before addressing the person's name. Or in this case, right before offending them by calling them losers. Dear losers, do you really think I'd hide presents under the couch? A loser is someone that does not succeed or regularly fails. In this case, every year they fail at finding Monica's Christmas presents, so they're losers. Get in, loser, we're going shopping. Dear losers, do you really think I'd hide presents under the couch? If you hide something, then you keep it out of sight. Can we please just cover this up with something, please? What? No, no, I am not gonna hide it from Phoebe. Back to our clip. In the US, it's common to keep Christmas presents hidden until it's time to open them, usually on December 24th or 25th. Dear losers, do you really think I'd hide presents under the couch? <laughs> P.S. Chandler, I knew they'd break you. <laughs> P.S. is an abbreviation that stands for postscript. We use it at the end of notes, letters, and emails to add any extra information or observations. P.S. Chandler, I knew they'd break you. <laughs> new is the simple past form of the irregular verb know. If you know something, then you're sure of it, you're certain, or positive. It's extremely funny here because Monica was positive that Phoebe and Rachel would convince Chandler to help them look for her Christmas presents. P.S. Chandler, I knew they'd break you. <laughs> Uh-oh, she may be on to us. Uh-oh is a cute interjection that we use when something goes wrong. We can also use it if we make a mistake or to express alarm. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What? We left Joey alone with the food. Yeah. Uh-oh. She may be on to us. If you're on to someone, then that means you're about to discover the truth or you're aware of what they're doing. It usually refers to an undesirable activity that someone is engaging in. I'm sorry, but you'd only slow us down. And that's exactly what Cheddar wants. That's right. I'm on to you, you slippery little bastard. So because Monica obviously knows that Rachel and Phoebe look for her Christmas presents every year, Phoebe sarcastically says that Monica's onto them. When in fact, she's not only onto them, she very much knows that they do this. Uh-oh, she may be onto us. <laughs> okay, let's test yourself and rewatch the clip without subtitles. But before we do, don't forget to download the awesome PDF we made of this video right down in the description box below. Okay, Phoebe, you look in the kitchen, I will look in the back closet. Okay. I can save you time, ladies. I'm right here. <laughs> yeah. Chandler, why don't you take a walk? This doesn't concern you. <laughs> we are looking for our Christmas presents for Monica. What? That's terrible. No, no, we do it every year. Oh, well, that, that makes it not terrible. No, yeah, we never find them. She's always bested us, that wily 
Minx. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. We're just going to search here for an hour, and then we're going to go over to Joey's and search, okay? No, not okay. You can't look for Monica's presents. Oh, no, we have to. No, you don't have to, and you can't, because I, I live here, too. <laughs> well, then you should look with us. Why? Chandler, aren't you worried about what to get Monica for Christmas? No, I have a great idea for a present for her. Oh, that's it? A great idea, I guess. <laughs> Chandler, that's not enough. I mean, what if she gets you a great present, two medium presents, and then a bunch of little presents, and you've just gotten her one great present? I mean, that's just gonna make her feel bad. Why would you do that to her, Chandler? Why? Why? If I helped, we could find him faster. That's right. Oh, oh, we have a live one. Oh, oh, it's a Macy's bag. Yeah. Oh, oh, who's it for? Dear losers, do you really think I'd hide presents under the couch? P.S. <laughs> Chandler, I knew they'd break you. Uh oh, she may be on to us. Why not continue learning English with friends? We did a video breakdown of a scene where Joey fixes Monica's bathroom, but he ends up gouging a hole on the floor. It goes terribly wrong as expected. Check out the video if you want to learn what gouge is, as well as other expressions used by native speakers. See you there.